FSHD or fasciocapular humeral dystrophy is a muscular dystrophy. It's actually the second most prevalent muscular dystrophy um, around the world. Um, it is a relentlessly progressive disease that causes weakness, starting generally in the head and then working down through the body to the lower extremities. Uh, typically has onset in the second decade of life. Um, it is uh, a genetic disease, so there's often a family history, but there are cases that are, are sporadic. And of course, there are cases in, in people uh, younger than the second decade of life who get diagnosed with this. Um, there is no available treatment for this, no disease-modifying therapy for this, and um, care is generally supportive. Um, some patients require wheelchairs. Other patients require uh, uh, assisted devices for breathing. Uh, many have significant limitations in, in mobility and function, particularly function in the upper extremities. So the, the pathology of this disease is actually well known. Um, and, and we know that it is um, aberrant expression of a particular gene called DUX4 that causes the dystrophic changes in muscle. And this um, aberrant signal results in proteins that are expressed that tell that muscle cell to die and then to return uh, to turn into fat, which causes the dystrophic changes. Uh, we found out through our own labs at Fulcrum that um, the aberrant expression is in part mediated by P38 MAP kinase, which is upstream from DUX4 expression. And we hypothesized that by inhibiting P38 MAP kinase, we could decrease the amount of DUX4. And we uh, found um, a P38 MAP kinase inhibitor called losmapamod, which um, we've been licensed. It's an experienced molecule with exposure in about 3,500 people so far, well-known, well-established safety data set, um, no known efficacy at this point uh, until we started studying it in FSHD. So losmapamod in our preclinical studies um, demonstrated decreased expression of DUX4 decreased expression of DUX4-mediated gene expression, and importantly, decreases in apoptosis, uh, which would lead to decreases in that dystrophic change within the muscle. So then we took losmapamod into the clinic. We took it into uh, patients with this disease, and we've recently reported, and uh, uh, we highlighted this at AAN, the results of a, from a phase two trial where we looked at DUX, uh, sorry, uh, losmapamod in patients with FSHD over 48 weeks. Uh, the primary endpoint for that study was changes in DUX4-driven gene expression. And then we looked at a multiple set of endpoints that gave us a quantitative assessment of uh, muscle fat infiltration by MRI, whole body musculoskeletal MRI. Uh, we looked at function, measuring things like reachable workspace, which is a measurement of function that assesses upper body mobility. And we looked at uh, strengths by dynamometry. Uh, we looked at patient-reported outcomes and then other endpoints as well to help us understand what the potential benefit is in these patients and also to understand more about the safety of this drug in patients. So um, in the end, what we found is that um, there was no change in ducts for driven gene expression uh, in either the placebo group or in the losmapamod group. There was no difference, but we did see significant changes in downstream mediators, including changes in muscle fat infiltration by Muscle, whole body musculoskeletal MRI. We saw changes in reachable workspace and in strength, and we saw improvements in how patients feel. The primary endpoint was, um, was not expected, um, in part because we did not expect the tremendous amount of variability at baseline that we found in this trial. At baseline, there was about a thousand fold spread of, of ducts for driven gene expression by quantitative RT-PCR. And we expected that to be much, much tighter. And we powered the study for a much tighter distribution than what, what, what actually happened. So um, in the end, when we look back, we had 80 patients. Not surprising to us as we look back to note that there's no way that we would have been able to detect changes with just 80 patients. But as I mentioned, we do have preclinical data that show that Los Mapamod decreases ducts for driven gene expression. And then we see all of these functional benefits. So um, we presented work at this meeting on, on whole body musculoskeletal MRI. We presented work about how is it that it was developed and what its potential relevance is. And then we presented these data. And in the Redux Force trial, we, we found that there was um, good. Um, data showing that, in fact, you can, with drug, um, reduce the progression of fat infiltration to the course of disease. So over 48 weeks, placebo patients had increased fat. 
those MAPAMA treated patients did not. Then we looked at um, other MRI parameters and saw trends towards uh, potential for um, effect that would favor drug, um, but not statistically significant uh, differences. Um, in terms of function, reachable workspace is this endpoint that we've used here, and we presented some additional data at AAN talking about what reachable workspace is. This, in essence, is a tool that allows us to quantify very specifically how much area a patient or a person can reach with an outstretched arm. These uh, numbers correlate quite tightly to activities of daily living and to quality of life. Um, patients with FSHD on average have about half of the relative surface area um, that a hundred percent normal functioning adult would have. And um, in the course of 48 weeks, patients on placebo show decreases in the relative surface area that they could reach, which would correlate to decreases in function. And in Los Mapamod treated patients, there was no change. And in some cases, in fact, there was an improvement in how much space they can reach, which would correlate we think to improvements in how patients can conduct their activities of daily living, important benefit. And in terms of patients um, reported benefit, uh, we asked the question today, how do you feel compared to baseline More people felt better on drug than on placebo? And that's a very important, meaningful uh, finding for us. So those data for us um, uh, confirmed the potential for benefit on top of a well-established risk profile. No new safety findings were identified in the trial and set us up for our phase three trial. So I, I also presented a little bit of uh, information about the phase three study, which will start later this year. Um, it is uh, in about 230 people with both FSHD1, type one and type two adults. And we'll be looking at reachable workspace over 48 weeks. Uh, that's the primary endpoint. Uh, we will not be looking at ductsport driven gene expression because it's not any longer meaningful to us. What we really wanna do is be able to demonstrate improvements on function um, and that's what this trial is designed to give us information on. We do have two ongoing open label studies with Los Mapamon. One is an extension of the Redux 4 trial uh, that has now patients um, out uh, another um, year or so since the last uh, visit, maybe even longer. Um, as those data come in, we'll be looking for opportunities to share after we've analyzed those data. We also have a second single center open label study um, that's ongoing. Um, and we presented data on that study at the American Academy of Neurology meeting. The data from that study, again, a, a single center, but separate from the other uh, trial sites, uh, corroborate what we saw in, in Redux 4. So we now have uh, two sets of data in patients with FSHD that show uh, similar trends towards potential for benefit. Uh, with a well understood risk profile. So that gives us a bit more confidence as we move forward into um, pivotal confirmatory trials that we hope will support registration and, and global availability of this medicine.